You're listening to the Traffic and Conversion Show. I'm your host, Michelle Fernandez, and joining me today is Marion Wagner, who is a business mindset coach that specializes in helping online entrepreneurs create a six-figure game plan without a large following on social media. A former school psychologist turned multiple six-figure business owner in two separate industries, Marion teaches a combination of psychological and strategic approaches to completely transform her client's approach towards growth. Using her signature business clarity blueprint, she helps hundreds of coaches, course creators, and online service providers launch and grow businesses that generate 10k plus months and well under a year she runs marion wagner coaching and hosts the get out of your head and grow your online business podcast while raising her nine-year-old son with her husband in denver colorado and they are welcoming a baby girl to their family this summer after several long years of infertility so happy for them anyway today is all about social media mindset hacks so stay tuned Hey there, it's Michelle. Welcome back to the show. And today we have Marion Wagner joining me. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. I am excited to have you. I know we've been trying to do this for a minute. I had major internet issues. So thank you for your patience (laughs) and hanging in there with me. And you shared some really great news with me today that a little one is on the way. So I can't wait to meet him or her. Is it her? Sure. It's a girl. Yeah. Yay. Well, congratulations. I Thanks. love this. So I've just recently learned how amazing you are. Can you tell everyone a little bit about yourself, what you do and your journey to get here? Yeah. Well, thanks so much for having me, Michelle. I am a huge fan of your podcast, so I'm excited to be here. And so I, my name is Marion Wagner. I'm a business mindset coach for coaches, consultants, and online service providers, but that's like many of us. I didn't start there. Um, about 13 years ago, I was a school psychologist and I've always been a total introvert and technology challenged, <laughs> which is so, which means I had no business joining the online business world, but I actually feel like introverts do really well in online business, but mm-hmm. Um, I didn't know what I was doing when I was a school psychologist, I decided I wanted to start something on the side that was just for me. And I decided to create a blog (laughs) back in the day. That was what people did. Mm -hmm. So I created a blog and I, it was a style blog and I started posting back then you had to post like four to five times a week, just to even have a chance of getting traffic. And so I posted there for zero people for over a year and a half. And I remember my friends, my partner at the time were kind of ridiculing me for working so hard on something Mm. that no one was reading or paying attention to. And a year and a half is a long time. Mm -hmm. So I remember I was driving home from work one day and I had in the psychology world, we call it a lightning bolt moment. And I had this moment of pure clarity where I'm like, what the heck am I doing? Because what I'm doing isn't working. And I really want this blog to work. So I realized I am just trying to copy what I see all these other successful bloggers do instead of actually trying to tap into my own voice, my own uh, perspective, uniqueness, weirdness, whatever you want to call it. And so I decided that moment, I'm going to start creating the blog and writing the blog in my voice to like that I want to create and grew the standards that are in the style blog industry in a way. So I, I immediately started, I started this feature every Friday called moments of the week, where I shared funny, weird stories of things that happened to me during the week. And long story short, it was a very unpolished blog, but it grew from like having three readers, one of which was my dad to (laughs) having like two over 250,000 page views a month. And I had brands like Wayfair, Adidas, Maybelline, uh, doing partnerships and all that was amazing. And I started making incredible income from it, but even better was I was actually in alignment with my voice and my, my energy. 
And I, <laughs> I was so happy creating content became easy. And, um, long story short, I founded my second online business. That one, I grew to over six figures in under a year. That one didn't take as long <laughs> as the <laughs> first one to get to six figures. But I just noticed over the past several years, there's this huge discrepancy in the online business space where I would see these amazing women who would fall into two camps. There'd be one camp where they had all the confidence in the world, but they had very little strategy or know-how on how to grow their online business. And then in the other camp, they, they read all the books, took all the courses, knew everything, had all the strategy, but they had very little confidence and gumption to actually take action and grow their business. So I decided to tap back into my psychologist roots and start doing business mindset coaching for online entrepreneurs. I love that. And as you're saying this, I'm like, oh yeah, maybe I need to hire you <laughs> <laughs> because I think we all have it. And it's so funny because you, you mentioned about how you're like, screw it. I'm just going to speak in my own voice. Right. Yeah. Um, cause especially when we first get started and I don't even know if it's just when we first get started. Um, cause I think it continues to come up as you go through where we feel like, oh my gosh, this is working for someone else. So I need to be just like them. I need to copy everything they're doing, right? And I need to do it just like that so I can have the success that they're having. And really what I've discovered, and I have to keep reminding myself is like, no, no, no. They're working with them because they're attracted to them for whatever their weirdness is. So then someone's going to be attracted to me because of my weirdness, right? Yeah. So that whole reminding yourself when you were saying that, I'm like, oh my gosh, I think that if most people get that is so true. And I love that you put people into two camps because I see that all the time, right? Where it's like, and even like the people with confidence, I also find that they're so visionary, right? And then they want to do all the things, and but they don't have the structure of getting it done. So it's almost like you need someone structured under you. Um, and I think I might be, I was going to say in camp two, where I learn all the things at first, like that's how I was when I first started. It was like, I wanted to learn everything and didn't feel that I was ready to start because I didn't learn everything. Like there was always something else to learn. Right. right? And I always felt like, well, I can't teach that because I'm not that, you know, that was the excuses or reasons because my confidence was so low. And I'm, do you find that with those type of people? Am I on? Like, oh I yeah. I mean, I think it's in the, in the online space, it's always evolving, right? We, we were just talking about this. Yeah. It's always changing. You're never going to be in the moment because what you knew yesterday is already outdated today. Mm-hmm. today. And I think p- there's a real fear with, especially with women in the online space, when they're just getting started that of perception of how they're going to look to people that know them in real life. Like right. how, what, what are my friends going to think my family um, are people going to like, do, do I, am I, um, an authority enough? Like, do I have the right certifications or the right, who am I to create this business? And that kind of imposter syndrome is just poison. You can never, you can't even begin. You can't get out of the gate if you have that holding you back. Um, yes. yeah. And even, I just think at every next level, there's always that right? Like, oh, yeah. you know, do I know enough now to charge this month, this month, I'm not this month, this much, right? Because it's always like, well, wait, I don't, I don't think I know. And it's funny that because as I'm saying it, like a thought just came to my mind. It's like, I don't think I know as much as this, like whatever influencer or whatever, whoever you look up to. I remember I had a client who is friends with one of these people that I like look up to in my little nerdy world. And she says, oh, so I had so-and-so look at the ads just to see if they can give us any feedback. So my first thing was like, my my heart sunk, right? And that would be like, I don't know, if you were a singer and you had, I don't know, Beyonce listen to your singing and give you (laughs) feedback, right? So it was like, my heart sunk. And then I'm like, oh my God, they're going to, I did so many, I probably did so many things wrong. And then, then the next words, so all these thoughts rushed through my mind. And then the next words that came out was like, oh my God, he was like, how is she getting those results? I'm not even getting those results. What is she doing? Can she tell me what she's doing? And I remember thinking to myself, here I am telling myself all these stories 
of what I'm doing wrong and how I'm not good enough and how I could probably get better results for my clients and da, 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 da. And then I'm like, a guru is asking me what I'm doing to get these results. Yeah. There's two things that you said there. Number one, the, the guru thing, the experts, I think in the online space, we tend to put certain people on pedestals Yes, that really, <laughs> if we sometimes saw the back end of what they have created or all the mistakes that they've made, because yeah, we just see the highlight reel or the, when they talk about, you know, we're happy that we made a six figure year or, you know, they're talking about a six figure day. It's, it's so easy to then fall into the stories and stories is really at the heart of all psychology, but especially with business, because we will find ourselves telling ourselves stories that are not even based in any kind of fact. It's just stuff we make up. Mm -hmm. They're lies, really. Mm -hmm. We tell ourselves lies about our own competence, our own worth and our own abilities. And we look for evidence to support those lies around us. So yeah, we look at other people that we see as being better than us, which isn't true. And we start looking at our own, our gifts of why we're quirky or weird or unique and special as being deficits. When I just want to like, shake everyone. If you're listening right now, like what makes you unique and special and authentic is actually your secret sauce. Mm -hmm. You just have to shed (laughs) the layer of you that's holding yourself back and stop looking at things like likes or number of followers or those vanity metrics as evidence that you're worthwhile, because those things really don't translate into, um, they don't translate into income really, they don't translate into results. I have clients that make incredible money and they'll maybe get like 17 likes on a post (laughs) and they could care less because they have the right people that are entering their inbox and asking how to work with them. I totally agree with you. So I'm totally guilty of all these things. (laughs) I don't know. Maybe it's a human thing or just a a me thing. And and I shared with you earlier that I've I've been on this journey to really just become more self-aware and kind of catch myself in things and stop myself um, with these things. So I have a couple of questions for you. So the first thing, when you were saying about the likes and the followers, so I did go on a research journey because I guess I like to collect data. (laughs) <laughs> but almost to pr- prove, I had to prove that what you just said was true. So I said, okay, I'm going to go to other agencies that I know. I'm going to see how many followers they have, right? Less than me, which I don't even think I, I have that many, right? So I'm like, okay. Then recently um, I met someone and, you know, she shared her income, which was way less, like not even at six figures than what I'm, when I'm earning. Not that that's important, okay? Right. But then I went to go just follow her. And she's got like 60, 70,000 people following her on Instagram. So to your point, here you have someone that you think, oh my God, I have all these followers. They must be making bank. Um, no, right? Because I knew her. So I'm like, okay, evidence, evidence, evidence. But then I still get those thoughts that come into my mind. Yeah. And it's totally normal. And I, I think that's awesome that you shared that because people need to hear that this is no matter what level you are it's normal. I mean, even you think about all these big wigs and their private jets, when they park their private jets in Las Vegas, they're looking to their left and their right and saying, Oh, their jets twice the size of my jet. Right. <laughs> but I always say not all followers are created equal. Mm-hmm. You don't want just any followers. In fact, I argue it's a really good thing when people will unfollow you or unsubscribe from your email list because they're, they're self editing and you don't have to waste um, energy or time on them. You can really pinpoint and talk to the right people. So one thing I just see in social media, just over my past 13 years of doing this is that it's, it's great if you post a picture of your dog and it gets 200 likes. Okay. That's awesome. But what is your end goal here? Is it to get recognition or is it to grow a business? my clients, they want to grow their business. So and I know yours are too. So really it's less about your content pillars, which I tend to think are getting a little outdated that concept. Instead, it's really about focusing on the stages of awareness 
and talking to your, your followers, your right ideal client and leading them through the stages of awareness. Number one, are they problem aware? Like, do they know that in your case that they have a traffic problem? They want to get more eyes, more attention on them. And if they are problem aware, then your job as a business owner is to help them become a solution aware. So you're like, Hey, I have a solution for this problem and we're paid traffic. Here's a door that you can walk through to fix this problem. Mm -hmm. And when you speak to those people and you help them identify the problem and make them aware of the solution that it's there when they are ready, right? It's not always on our time. That's when you start creating a business funnel that converts. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. And, and I, I do believe that the, the level of awareness is, is a big thing because you're really trying to bring in and that's how you're going to grow. That's how you're going to get people to know, you know, are you the chick that I want to hang out with or to teach me this? Right. Yes. And that and, and a lot of times for me, again, because I'm all up in my head sometimes, but as I start talking, I'm listening to myself and then I'm like, oh, I totally know what I'm talking about, right? So as you start talking about the levels of awareness and you start bringing up these tips, I think it just kind of gives you that boost because what's coming out of your mouth is good stuff, right? Um, so what do we do when, when we're looking at these things? Like, how do you think we should be approaching social media like in a healthy way? without doing the comparison. Cause really I do think a paritis is like a real thing. Like yes. it, can kill, it can kill you in your business for sure. Yes. Um, absolutely. <laughs> I think it's important that number one, you have to put your blinders on and, and create what I call that white space in your, in your head in order for you to tap into your own zone of genius. It's really difficult to know what your voice is when you're so busy consuming other people's content and saying how good they are, how smart they, I'll never sound like that. I will never have photos like that. Well, that's, that's not where genius comes from. It doesn't come from looking at other people. It actually comes from zoning out and tuning into what is it that you have to say? What mm -hmm. is your voice? And so I just encourage everyone here to look at their content and ask themselves, Am I being vanilla? Am I watering myself down and diluting my own voice because I don't, I'm afraid of something? Could it be judgment? Could it be people unfollowing? Could it be negativity? Mm -hmm. I think, I don't know who said it, but someone said, if you don't have people, you know, finding a problem or disagreeing with you on a daily basis, then you're not really having a perspective. You don't have a take. Right. And I think in this new age of online in social media, it's like content isn't king. Clarity is king. Mm. And if you can get so clear about who you are and how you can help someone and get them to really resonate with you and trust you, that's golden. And some people overestimate how many clients they need to really grow a huge business. Maybe it's only 10 solid dream clients and you're taking off. I don't know. So maybe it's just speak to that one to 10 people. You need, whoever's listening right now needs to rewind and listen to that part again. <laughs> <laughs> and then like, like bookmark it or something that whenever you get in that headspace to come back and listen to that, because what you just said was gold. And I really think that that hits to that, that point so, so well, because we always get stuck in our mind on that part. Um, while we're on that part, when you know it comes up and you know you're telling yourself a story, mm -hmm. okay? So my, one of my old coaches, she would always tell me that this is normal. It's just how quickly you move out of it, right? However, sometimes you get stuck in this and you're like, oh, I know that I shouldn't be telling myself this. I know I shouldn't be thinking this. I just can't get myself out of it. Yes. What do you do? Yes. I love that you asked this because yeah, people like, I want to be positive, but how do I begin? Like, how do I get unstuck? My recommendation, um, is just take, give yourself five minutes. Even if you just set a timer, you can create five minutes in your life mm -hmm. and grab a pen and paper and actually write down what thoughts you're having. Okay. This is 
something you can pay a coach a lot of money to help you do, but you can also do it yourself. <laughs> Write it down. What are your thoughts? Bring them out of your head and onto paper. And then for each one, ask yourself, is this true? How, and then uh, chances are, you're going to be like, no, it's not true that she's better than me or, you know, um, I am qualified. I am worthy of success. This is not true. So then ask yourself, how else can I look at this? And what you're doing here is you're doing a process called reframing, which is, it's a fancy term of think about like a picture of like a art piece and you're taking off the negative frame and you're putting on a healthy, positive frame and you're restructuring something in your mind, that story that is holding you back, that will hold you back unless you actually fix this, write it down and create a new story. So for instance, this has nothing to do with business, but if you believe in your core that you are not worthy of love, like real love, then you can't attract that into your life. Like you will never attract that, which you don't own in your head. So it is so important with business that you first identify those stories that are poison and write them down and create new stories because you will attract what you choose to believe. And it's a choice. So that's the good news. We can choose yeah. new thoughts. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. I am going to do that the next time <laughs> that happens. And, and, you know, as a side note, like when you have, well, if you, or when you have children, like these are things that you can also use with them because yeah, maybe they don't have a business, but we all know kids are not like the nicest or the pressure that the schools put on them. So these are all really great things to do. Now, when it comes to our business and it's like, okay, we're checking the boxes, we're following all the things our mentors or whoever is telling us to do. And then it's like, ugh, nothing is working. Like, when is this going to happen? Right. And then we get in that, oh, I'm stuck or I'm overwhelmed or whatever. And I just can't seem to move forward. So how do we get unstuck? <laughs> so first question I would say is, well, how long have you been actually failing forward. Like I shared in the beginning of this podcast, I posted like, it was like 30 hours a week for over a year and a half. And my story is not unique. I feel like there's most online business owners who are, that reach a level of success. They have that period of time where they're just failing and failing and failing and just still leaning in because they know that this is how they're going to learn. Mm -hmm. So I would just say, number one, Cause I do, I have clients that come to me after like two months, I've been posting for two months <laughs> and nothing's happening. You're like, well, oh. <laughs> so be patient and know that this is the messy, messy beginning that you need to go through. Now, if you've been posting for yeah a year and a half and it's like crickets, that's frustrating. And I would say a couple of things. It's time to ask questions. Are you doing things because someone told you, you, you should do them mm. and you have to do them, but do they really feel right to you? I mean, or do they feel like you're just checking a box? Like you said, mm -hmm. um, you know, in network marketing, I was sure that I never sent a, Hey girl message because to, to cold market people, oh my God, that doesn't feel right to me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to grow in a way that feels right to me. That feels authentic. It might be harder, but I don't care. So you have to kind of look at your business and be like, what feels in line and what, what am I avoiding here too? And maybe it is exploring paid traffic. Maybe you're afraid that you, you're afraid there's some sort of thing holding you back that maybe you're not ready or I don't know. What are some fears that you hear from people that? Yeah. I'm and, and it's funny that you said the avoiding, like, what am I avoiding? Cause there's, yeah. I feel like, um, hmm, it, it obviously depends on the circumstance, but I feel like a lot of times you think you're doing all the things, but you're really avoiding something. Or you're like, you said, you're not leaning into the one thing that really makes you feel uncomfortable. And that's the one thing that you need to do to move forward. Yes. Right. <laughs> yeah. right? So then, or like you're, like kind of dancing around this. And, um, and I, and I honestly believe, and, and that's why I'm so glad that you're here is it's always the mind. So when I'm in a group and I see the two, the two, um, what did you call them? The two camps, um, where it's like, okay, we're all learning the same thing. And yet somebody's killing it. 
right? And everybody else is like ah, kind of moving up or by the end of the program, they're just in the same place and they're complaining. And I really think it's your mind. I think mm-hmm. it's trusting the process, believing in yourself. Like I honestly, I look at people and I'm like, man, they just came in because it was just like, okay, if, if you're showing me that you've done this and now you're going to show me the way it's just like, okay, if I just do these things and trust it, it'll go. But we all get stuck in our own head and our own insecurities. And, um, and it's funny because like sometimes in, in the moment where instead of like pouting about it, like I used to, <laughs> cause I used to sit here and woe is me or whatever. And I just, I'm like, okay, what do I need to do right now? Like right now in this minute to do something that I know that I should be doing that I'm not doing and just to get it done. And it's right. always that one thing. And as soon as I do it, something happens and it comes into, I think what you talked about, um, the attraction, like, you know what I mean? It's like, if I'm doing this, then it's like, I know it. So it's going to come back to me type of thing. Yes, it completely. And I think along those lines, if you're feeling stuck is take a moment and remove your ego yourself from the big picture and think about what we're doing here is you're actually, you're, you're in business to help people, right? You solve a problem, whether that's health and wellness or, um, business problems, whatever you have a problem that you solve. Mm -hmm. So when we take ourselves out of it and just ask yourself, what does my ideal client need to hear right now? Yes. What does she need to hear today? What does she need to, to learn or know, or just read and then write a post to her. Maybe that me, and maybe that was you five years ago, right? That person who was feeling all these feelings and, and tell a story like stories in social media and in advertising, they, they resonate for a reason. Mm -hmm. Tell a story of overcoming and of how you fix that problem so that you are then tapping into the problem awareness, but then you're bringing it to the solution awareness. And you're also building that. I know it's overused, but the no like, and trust factor Oh, for sure, but people get to know you. And so that's the big thing I think I see when I have clients that are they're almost kind of hiding in behind the reels or they're hiding behind the, the filters and the stuff. Like it's all surface level. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I feel like I follow you, but I don't know you, Mm -hmm. you know? And so I just encourage you to, you don't need to share your whole life story, but like show us some personality, get to get some opinion out there. You share, share who you are more, and then people will, will reciprocate. For sure. For sure. So when you're just starting out or if you're just starting out, what should you be looking to focus on in order to grow? So just with social media, anything or anything, (laughs) I would think the main thing honestly is you want to get clear on who you are and what you, the problem that you solve and who you want to help with. So the three questions I actually haven't written down here that I was just working with client on is number one, ask yourself, who do you want to serve? Like who is your dream client? Get really clear on that. Okay. Cause otherwise you're going to create advertising that attracts the wrong client. And then you're going to start not liking exactly. your business. Exactly. And then number two, what is the promise of your back end? Like, what is it that you're really delivering to people and can you deliver it? And what does that look like? What's that transformation? Get really crystal clear on that because that's at the backbone of your mm-hmm. whole messaging. And then number three is what makes your approach unique? Like everyone's unique. The people that say, I have nothing, I'm boring. I have nothing to offer. No, I want to slap them. No, you are amazing. <laughs> you are unique. If you're a weird introvert who loves Star Trek, that's awesome. Like, love it. <laughs> Be unique. So how is your approach unique? Like what makes you different from all the other people in the field? And Mm. that's what you go in on. I love that. I love that. Okay. So what are the most recurring things like as you're growing and, you know, when it comes to your mindset, Mm. um, when you're going your online business, (laughs) I think it's, it's unavoidable. (laughs) You're going to have moments of self-doubt moments of comparison. Um, am I good enough moments of where you question like what the heck you're doing? Um, 
And when you're growing a business too, you also look at the bottom line, like the income coming in. You might have some periods where you're like, you have fear, take the wheel and be like, can I even like make the income that I need to make from this? Mm -hmm. Um, and that's, those are all things that you can expect. That's why entrepreneurship, like owning your own business, I say it's for everyone, but it really truly is for those who can really push through those things. Oh, for sure. It's hard. It's easier to work for someone else, to be honest. Oh, absolutely. You don't have, you don't have that responsibility. I remember, and I know I've shared this before, um, where I like literally was like, am I strong enough to get through this? Like, am I strong enough to do this? Like, I literally yeah. asked myself that question. Like, I'm not sure I am, you know, because there were challenging times, whether it be with a customer or with, you know, the revenue that's coming in, how am I going to pay now the people that work for me? And it's a lot. And it's like, you do have to be super, super duper strong to do it. Yeah. You know? And I think it's also important for people to feel like, or to know that they don't, you don't have to do it on your own. And it doesn't even matter if you have a coach, it could also just be find some other people in your, in your niche. Like I don't see myself as having any competitors because I do things a different way. They do things a different way. I am actually really good friends with a lot of other business mindset coaches mm -hmm. and we support one another and women like you that we connect with on the podcast, like this online community is so supportive that you are never alone, even though I know it feels like it. You always have other people who we can lock arms and lift each other up because we all go through those periods of time. For sure. Yeah. So what other kind of mistakes are you seeing people make? Like common, I guess, common mistakes. <laughs> I see shiny, op like, honestly, the whole shiny object syndrome is an epidemic <laughs> in my eyes. I, I feel like people get lost with, um, spending all this time creating reels, which reels are, are fine. I'm not, I'm not banging on reels. I'm just saying like, if you spend an hour on a reel and expect to get a $10,000 retainer client, it's probably not realistic. The ROI on spending time on Canva or, or even like writing a long Instagram post mm -hmm. is really not there. So you want to spend more time creating content that lives on as long form. So for instance, like this podcast, or if you have a blog with good SEO, um, or your, your email newsletter something where it's reaching people a different way and it's not expiring. Mm -hmm. Um, like an Instagram post does after 24 hours or so. Right. That is true. I yeah. mean, because we get, we get so caught up in it. Like, Oh, this is the latest thing I need to jump in. You know what I mean? And then you're like, Oh, there it goes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's good. I just thought about all this time. I did it at different angles, finding the right light. I retook it all. You know, it's like, dude, you didn't have to spend a half hour to do a 15 second, <laughs> but we do. Or, or thinking that you need to post every single, like there's a lot of rules that people are told to do. I don't know who's telling people all these rules, but you don't have to post every single day. You don't have to, um, you know, engage within the first 15, 20. I mean, if you have that time, that's great. There's, there's rules to that, but you can still, if you don't have it, if you're a mom that has three, three kids at home and you're working full time and you're trying to grow your business, you are not failing. If you post two, three times a week and your content has a specific purpose, right? You're not just posting to create content to check a box. Right. Um, in that you're really focused on talking to your ideal client, that's valuable. That's you're winning. So I think right now, the biggest mistakes I just see are people focusing too much on the vanity metrics, um, comparison, put your blinders on and really dial into what makes you unique. Mm -hmm. And then shiny object syndrome, make sure that you are putting your time in the buckets that deliver the responses, the outcomes that you want. And so you have to decide what is the outcome I want? Is it, it do I want to be an influencer and do the likes matter? Okay. That's great. But you, that's for you to decide, or is it, you want people to DM you asking how they can work with you. 
Like that's mm-hmm. a different outcome. So you create different content. I love it. I love it. Cause you know, there's so many other challenges and, and I love that you hit on this. So that one thing that I always, um, two things that I always said was that I heard that I said, whatever, but then I heard <laughs> that I repeat, that's what I'm trying to say is like, choose your dreams over your fears, right? So every time when we talked about earlier, it's like, I feel fearful or, or I don't know. And sometimes it's not the fear of failure for me. It's the fear of success. And my Mm, husband had, my husband had to point that out to me. He's like, I don't think you're afraid to fail at all. I think you're afraid to succeed. And how would you keep up with that? Right. Um, So I always do that. And then for me, the other thing is like, own what I know and stand in my power right? And I literally have post-its on my computer because I start to, and, and funny, because um, on my mastermind trip, we were in the car and one of the girls was like, let's, let's, uh, how did, you, I forgot the word she used, but let's basically talk about each other. Like, let's give up, let's tell each other what we think about each other. And I was like, I don't <laughs> know, this is going to be good, but okay, let me be open to receive. And one of the things that they, one of the girls said is, She's like, Michelle, you are so smart, but you downplay everything that you know. And I was like, okay, that was a reality check. And in my mind, I'm like, I just don't want to be the girl that like always hogs up the conversation. Yeah. You know, like some people, I know that that's what they need to feel whatever. And I'm always like, that's okay. Let them talk. But she's like, you just downplay everything. So I'm like, wait a minute. I am not standing in like owning what I know and standing in my power. So I thought that was kind of a cool thing, speaking to your um, perspective of you're not alone in this world. And it's nice to have people that love you and support you, but will be honest with you. Yes. Right? Yes. And that's refreshing. I mean, that's kind of kinda. rare. <laughs> I was like, kind of. And, and it, But for those things, you have to be open to receiving that it's coming from a place of support and love and da da. It's not like, and she wasn't trying to hurt my feelings. And then, but it really got me to now think like, okay, how can I show more of that? You know what I mean? How mm-hmm. can I, cause I truly, and, that, and that's what she was saying. It's like, you, I know you, but then I see you in front of other people and I see a difference. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah. And also what you said there about the fear of success, mm-hmm. that's actually a lot of, most of my clients are all very ambitious, successful women, whether they're at the beginning stages of their business or further along, that is a trait that a lot of ambitious women struggle with is the fear of success way more than the fear of failure, Mm -hmm. but it's a blind spot, right? They don't always, you you may not be aware of it, but it can hold you back big time. Okay. Is there anything else or final words you want to share with us? Um, yeah, I would say if I could just leave with one thing, it would be to, I just encourage you to let go of this feeling that things need to look perfect or sound perfect, or you need to show up a certain way instead just show up as, as you imperfectly. (laughs) And I just give this analogy when I, I have my own podcast and when I started, I, the very first episode I filmed, I wanted to record it. I wanted to delete it and record, delete, 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 because I kept stumbling over my words Mm -hmm. until finally I'm like, oh, screw it, Marion. Like, this is just how you talk. You, (laughs) I stumble over my words. It's okay. (laughs) But that's actually part of who I am and it's okay. And people will, they want to connect with who you are in how you show up and Mm -hmm not some polished version of you. I think as social media, I think we see this more and more. So every day where we are drawn to people who show us the imperfections and who are just human and yes. not so yeah, yeah. Edited and perfect. And, you know, we like the human aspect. So that's what it, my encouragement would be is just maybe stop overthinking and just start leaning in and showing up and knowing that you can do this. Mm-hmm. I love this. Okay. So let's get into Michelle's hot minute. I'm going to ask you a few rapid fire questions. Yes. Okay. You ready? Let me set my timer. Okay. Ready? Yep. Um, what is the favorite thing you love to do with your son? Uh, we, <laughs> this is like me stepping on my words. Um, we <laughs> love to just go on walks together. He's nine. Yeah. Would you rather have a personal masseuse or a personal chef? 
chef, hands down. <laughs> Massage, I get bored. I don't know. <laughs> what is your next travel destination? Oh, now that we're having a baby in two months, I don't know. I don't have maybe just the hospital. I don't have one. <laughs> we're going we have to work on that. Okay. I we'll give you some time to think about it. Okay. Um, what are you most grateful for? Oh, I'm most grateful right now in this moment for, yeah, our little baby girl that's coming. We went through almost three years of IVF and miscarriage and failure. And so she's, and I'm 43 years old. This, she's a blessed, she's a out of the blue the uh, surprise. So Love that's what, I'm grateful for. <clears throat> what is your guilty pleasure? Um, caffeine. That's about as bad as it gets my vice. Yeah. Would you rather have a pause or rewind button in your life? Oh, geez. You know, if I'm being honest, I would say, I was going to say pause, but I think I would like the rewind button so that I could go back in time and meet my husband earlier in life. Cause we, Aww met later in life. So, that's, oh, that's, I so, love that. that's so sweet. No, but it's so sweet. Cause it's so like cool. And you find someone that you're like, yes, like, you know oh, what I yeah. mean? I love yep. that. Um, okay. So what last question, <laughs> what are some of your favorite holiday traditions when you were growing up? Um, you know, it's funny. We, I didn't, because when my mom died but at a very, at a very young age, um, we didn't have a lot of traditions that, so it's so funny that you asked that question because now with my son, I feel this pressure. Like we got to make more traditions. I don't know what, tra- what, what are some good traditions? So we're actually creating those from scratch right now. Um, that's so beautiful. Like that you get to do it with him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh my yeah. God. I love that. So it's kind of a naughty answer, but we're working on creating them now. Oh, I love it. Yeah. This was so much fun. I appreciate you so much, Marianne, for coming Thanks, on the Michelle. show. Can you tell everybody where to find you? Yeah. So I have my imperfect, my imperfect podcast It's called <laughs> get out of your head and grow your online business. Um, and then people can just find me on Instagram or on my website. It's the same thing. It's Marion Wagner coaching.com. I love it. All right. Well, there you have it. Social media mindset hacks, which was really, really more mindset hacks <laughs> that we all need <laughs> yeah. with Marion Wagner. Definitely go check her out. I'll drop where you can find her in the show notes. Thank you again, Marion. Thank I you. Love, I love you. All right. Until next time, let's grow your business together.